Number 15. Patricia Ebel A bikini-clad grandma named Patricia Ebel found herself in some hot water back in 2015 when she re-rendered a Ford Mustang with her BMW in Naples, Florida. She was driving her 10-year-old grandson home from a day at the pool when the crash occurred. A local news crew captured the strange scene on camera as Collier County Sheriff's deputies administered a sobriety test to the barely clothed woman. She smelled strongly of alcohol, according to an arrest report, and she allegedly bombed the sobriety test. Police accused Ebel of having a blood alcohol content of more than twice the legal limit and charged her with driving under the influence. When a reporter asked a grandmother if she knew why she was being taken into custody, she said no. Ebel was sentenced to probation and banned from drinking alcohol for a year. And apparently the message didn't sink in because she was busted for drinking in 2016 when her blood alcohol content tested at more than twice the legal limit during a visit to her probation officer. Ebel managed to sort out her legal issues and in 2017, she opened up to Inside Edition about her scandalous run-ins with the law. She said that several people offered to buy the bikini she was wearing when she got her DUI, but that she held on to the two-piece. Patricia also admitted that she still drives around in a bikini, but that she wears a cover-up now, which perhaps isn't as crazy as it sounds, considering she lives in Florida. Number 14. Janet Strickland 72-year-old William Strickland was walking outside his Chicago home to catch a bus to dialysis treatment in 2013 when someone fatally shot him seemingly out of nowhere. An investigation uncovered evidence that Strickland's wife, 64-year-old Janet Strickland, had persuaded the couple's grandson, also named William Strickland, to shoot his grandfather so they could access his money. The younger Strickland used his grandfather's gun to shoot the victim six times. He then took cash from the victim's wallet and used it to buy a tattoo, new shoes, and a phone. Strickland and his grandmother also allegedly bought a car, home furniture, and other things with the money. But they didn't get to enjoy the influx of funds for very long before they were arrested for murder. Janet Strickland caught an additional charge of solicitation of murder. William Strickland was convicted of murder and was sentenced to 40 years in prison. Janet was also convicted and received an 18-year sentence. Number 13. Roxanne Record when Roxanne Record caught her four-year-old granddaughter sneaking a sip of whiskey in the kitchen of her Baton Rouge, Louisiana home in 2021, she allegedly made the girl finish the bottle, which may have been more than half full. The defenseless little girl's mother, Kadja Record, was accused of failing to intervene as her daughter drank herself to death at Roxanne's command. Tragically, she passed away with a blood alcohol level of 0 .680, more than eight times the legal limit for adults. Police began piecing together what happened after responding to a call about an unresponsive child at the home. Paramedics tried to save the girl's life, but it was too late. Kaja Record reportedly told officers that she saw Roxanne take the little girl into a hallway with a bottle of whiskey and that the bottle was empty when they returned. But officers claim that she gave inconsistent statements, so her exact role in the situation is unclear. An arrest warrant states that Kaja tried to put her daughter in the bathtub when she saw that she had passed out, but she failed to dial 911. Roxanne allegedly claimed that she wanted to take full responsibility for the needless tragedy, admitting that she knows she messed up, that it went too far, and that she ruined everyone's lives, according to law and crime. Both Roxanne and Kaja face a first-degree murder charge in the horrific case. Their cases appear to be ongoing. Since the arrest, the little girl's aunt, Ebony Record, has spoken up, claiming that Roxanne abused all her kids as children and went on to abuse her grandchildren. Ebony told local station WAFB that she partially blames herself for not speaking up because if someone had, the child's life may have been kept out of harm's way. She encouraged others not to make the same mistake and to report abuse when they know it's going on. Number 12. Edna Faye Daniels 30-year-old Ryan O'Neill Woodruff was already out on bond for allegedly killing two family members when his grandmother, 78-year-old Edna Faye Daniels, was accused of helping him cover up yet another murder. 
According to law enforcement officials, the first two murders occurred in South Carolina in 2021. In early 2023, Woodruff was accused of killing 18-year-old Tykes Demetrius Walker in Greentown. Daniels allegedly witnessed Walker's murder and then lied to the police about what she knew. In fact, the murder happened inside the senior citizen's home, according to an arrest warrant out of Georgetown County. The warrant also states that Daniels knowingly provided false information to investigators on multiple occasions during questioning and that she helped to conceal the crime. She faces one count of obstruction of justice and one count of accessory to murder after the fact. Number 11. Avdosia Pelavanidis 82-year-old grandmother of six, Avdosha Effie Pelavanidis, was pretty much the last person Australian authorities might have suspected of smuggling cocaine if they didn't have a solid reason to believe she was involved. The senior citizen, described by her neighbours in Adelaide as a lovely lady who loves to sew, was nabbed by law enforcement in early 2023 for allegedly co-conspiring with her 30-year-old grandson, Costas Pelavanidis, to import $3.2 million worth of cocaine. The octogenarian is accused of being part of a drug syndicate that was attempting to get its hands on 8 kilos, 17.6 pounds of the drug. Pelavanidis has maintained her innocence so far throughout the case, claiming she had no idea why she was in trouble and insisting that she had never even touched a cigarette, let alone cocaine or any other illegal substance. She told the press that police found a box filled with drugs at her residence but that she was unaware of its presence prior to the raid on her home. Community members are reportedly shocked by Effie's arrest and are having a hard time believing that she knowingly participated in the drug trade. The case is ongoing. Number 10. Margaret Buttimer just days into the 2023 New Year, a 68-year-old Irish grandmother named Margaret Batima was arrested for allegedly verbally abusing Ukrainian refugees at a hotel in Cork. The Garda, Irish police, went to the hotel after receiving reports about a disturbance and they witnessed the woman's behavior firsthand. Detective Nigel Welton told the court that Batima was demanding to know how many Ukrainian nationals were staying in the area and how much it was costing Irish taxpayers. She was also accused of calling the refugees criminals. Welton asked her to stop, but she continued to make a scene as he put it. After several attempts to get Batima to control herself, Welton felt he had no choice but to arrest her. In court, Batima's defense lawyer argued that his client didn't accuse the refugees of being criminals, but that she simply asked if they had been vetted. But Welton insisted that he heard Batima clearly and that he was speaking the truth about what she said, and the elderly woman's history seemed to speak for itself. By the time she went to court for her most recent alleged crimes, she had already been arrested for similar incidents, as well as her repeated refusal to wear a COVID mask. In 2021, she was sentenced to three months of jail time for her mask-related convictions. Judge James McNulty, who oversaw one of her cases, suspected that Batima was under the influence of people with a warped and non-conformist agenda. He sentenced her to 16 weeks in prison, with half the sentence suspended as long as she stays away from hotels, accommodating refugees and asylum seekers. Number 9. Anna May Blessing 92-year-old Anna May Blessing made headlines in 2018 when she was accused of killing her 72-year-old son, Thomas Blessing, in an effort to stop him from putting her into an assisted living facility. She pondered the matter for a few days before deciding what needed to be done. Anna May hid two handguns in the pocket of her robe and fired multiple bullets into Thomas's face and neck at the home they shared in Fountain Hills, Arizona. The victim's 57-year-old girlfriend got into a struggle with Blessing and eventually got her to drop the gun, at which point the murderous matron pulled out her backup pistol and pointed it at the girlfriend. Luckily, the quick-thinking younger woman knocked it out of Blessing's hand. Blessing was sitting in her recliner when police arrived and took her into custody. During questioning, she said that she had planned to take her own life after shooting her son, but was unable to after having the guns wrestled away from her. She also explained that Thomas and his girlfriend were ignoring her after returning home from a vacation and that they treated her badly. Blessing was charged with first-degree murder, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, and kidnapping. She passed away in jail hospice in early 2019, just weeks before her case was set to go to trial. 
Number 8. Carolyn Manning In early 2023, a SWAT team raided the Monroe, Louisiana home of 20-year-old Kylan Manning, a suspected member of the Deuce 5 gang, armed with a warrant to arrest him for four counts of distribution of a controlled dangerous substance and conspiracy to distribute narcotics. The young man's grandmother, 58-year-old Carolyn Manning, told police that Kylan had barricaded himself in his room and was refusing to come out. A brief standoff ensued, during which Carolyn allegedly interfered by trying to walk past the cops despite being instructed not to. She was arrested due to the distracting nature of her behavior and was charged with interfering with a law enforcement investigation and Kylan was also taken into custody after the standoff. During the raid, authorities found a loaded handgun, several bags of marijuana, and scales in Kylan's bedroom. In addition to the charges detailed in the warrant, he was charged with resisting an officer, illegal carrying of a weapon in the presence of narcotics, and a conspiracy-related offense. Number 7. Kim Taylor a Massachusetts grandmother named Kim Taylor was just trying to give back to her community by volunteering at a farm for therapy animals in 2021, but the 73-year-old paid a heavy price for her good deed when a sheep suddenly rammed her while she tended to some animals alone. It's unclear what triggered the attack at the farm, which is located in Bolton, roughly 40 miles 64.4 kilometers outside Boston. By the time anyone discovered Taylor, she was seriously injured. She went into cardiac arrest as first responders arrived on the scene. Taylor was rushed to the hospital, where she was pronounced dead from her injuries. The senior citizen was a treasured volunteer at the farm, who had been donating her time for more than a year before the tragedy occurred. According to experts, rams, or male sheep, occasionally become aggressive, but fatal attacks on humans are extremely rare, making Taylor's fate a highly unlikely tragedy. When the story broke, authorities were still trying to decide what to do with the ram that attacked the elderly volunteer. Number 6. Marie Sally Dufresne during the early morning hours one day in 2021, 22-year-old Hunter Mason Johnson allegedly drove through a construction zone in St. Charles Parish, Louisiana, striking several vehicles and fatally hitting 44-year-old Brady Ortego. The victim was thrown from a bridge and into the Mississippi River. Johnson ditched his vehicle and fled the scene on foot, according to authorities, who accused the suspect of calling his grandmother, 73-year-old Marie Sally Dufresne, to come and pick him up. In a news release, law enforcement stated that Dufresne's actions prevented them from immediately apprehending Johnson. By the time the deadly hit and run occurred, the suspect already reportedly had several arrests under his belt, as well as a civil lawsuit alleging his involvement in an incident that left a man severely injured. According to an arrest warrant, he and a friend spent the evening out drinking at Hooters in Metairie before he struck and killed Ortego. Johnson allegedly bought 18 shots in just three hours and drank at least half of them himself. Investigators claimed to see him stumbling around in surveillance footage that was captured before the accident. He was charged with vehicular homicide, DWI, hit and run resulting in death, and obstruction of justice. Dufresne was charged with obstruction of justice for her alleged role in the case. Number 5. Lilian Morales Janet Concepcion was alarmed when her little boy Jojo told her in 2021 that his father planned to take him away to a farm and that he hoped she would join them. But she continued to honor her court-ordered visitation agreement with the boy's father, 45-year-old Jorge Morales II, and things continued as usual for the next year. Concepcion's worst nightmare came true in August of 2022, when Jojo disappeared from Miami with Morales and his mother, 68-year-old Lilian Pina Morales. An Amber Alert was issued for the little boy, who was captured in surveillance footage at a Walgreens in Maine two days later. The suspects ditched the SUV they were traveling in near the Canadian border and have not been spotted since. Investigators believe that Morales spent months planning his son's kidnapping and that they're hiding out somewhere in eastern Canada. According to the last update, they may be in New Brunswick. Both the FBI and the U.S. Marshals searched high and low for the fugitives and the little boy, who reportedly had medical needs. 
Thankfully, Jojo was found alive and well in New Brunswick, Canada, and was reunited with Concepcion shortly thereafter. Both Jorge and Lilian Morales were arrested in connection with the alleged kidnapping. Lilian faces charges of custody interference and removing a child from the state. The cases against her and Jorge appear to be ongoing. According to the most recent update from November 2022, both suspects were being held without bond. Number 4. Peggy Camarillo one day in 2022, someone broke down the door to a residence in Clearwater, Florida, and fatally shot 30-year-old Michael Conrad. According to police, the victim and the alleged killer, 21-year-old Stuart Beck, were involved with the same woman who was present at the time of the shooting. Naturally, emotions ran high among Conrad's loved ones after his murder. His grandmother, 58-year-old Peggy Camarillo, is accused of taking things too far, though, by harassing the woman at the center of the deadly love triangle. Investigators allege that Camarillo sent the woman a message on social media stating, I have to bury my baby in a couple of days, and you know how hard that is going to be. I will not be responsible for my actions. Camarillo allegedly went on to warn the woman that her best bet is to leave town and that she'll never live peacefully as long as she remains local. The woman reportedly took Camarillo at her word and fled town due to the threats. Beck faces a first-degree murder charge and Camarillo was charged with threatening a witness. Number 3. Teresa Hansen 53-year-old British grandmother Teresa Hansen rang in the 2023 New Year and her 54th birthday from behind bars after allegedly killing her husband, 54-year-old Paul Hansen. The deadly incident occurred just three days after Christmas at the couple's home in West Cowick, when police received a report that Paul was gravely wounded. He was rushed to the hospital, where he died from his injuries. Teresa Hansen, a hairdresser by day, was charged with murdering her husband of 34 years. He died from a single stab wound to the heart. According to the most recent update, the case was still under investigation as police gathered evidence and interviewed neighbors and witnesses. A month after the murder, Paul's body still had not been released to the family due to the defense team's request for a second post-mortem exam. Family members could be heard sobbing in the courtroom as the judge addressed Teresa, who denied murdering her husband. Court officials described the case as a difficult situation for all involved, and one so serious that only the Crown Court was equipped to deal with it. She was granted bail and is on electronic monitoring pending the outcome of the case, and must stay with her parents until a conclusion is reached in court. Number 2. Hester, Burke Halter, and Lena Bartula the cannabis compound cannabidiol, or CBD, has become popular in recent years for the therapeutic benefits it provides without the typical mind-altering effects of marijuana. But its over-the-counter availability has led to some confusing legal situations. In 2018, a 71-year-old grandmother named Lena Bartula was arrested at the Dallas airport for possessing a vial of CBD oil that she used to treat back pain. She was slapped with a felony charge, spent 22 hours in jail, and missed her flight. The following year, in 2019, 69-year-old Hester Burkhalter was arrested for carrying a vial of CBD oil in her purse at Disney World. She used the oil for arthritis pain and had a doctor's note to go with it, just in case a situation like this were to occur. Burkhalter was nevertheless charged with a felony. Luckily, both women saw their charges either reduced or dropped entirely. But that wasn't enough to satisfy Burke Halter, who was left feeling so wronged after her case was dismissed that she sued Disney, the Orlando Police Department, and the Orange County Sheriff's Office. Her lawyer, Ben Crump, said that he believed the Orange County deputies who responded to the scene were hell-bent on putting the grandmother behind bars. The lawsuit accused the defendants of assault and battery, false arrest and imprisonment, defamation, and emotional distress. Burkhalter claimed that she panicked and began vomiting while being taken into custody, and that law enforcement denied her proper medical care. She described the experiences of being arrested in front of her relatives and being strip-searched at the police station as humiliating. The senior citizen requested more than $18 million in damages for herself and family members who were vacationing with her at the time of her arrest. According to court records, the status of the case is pending. Number 1. Nancy Martin 
In 2017, federal authorities discovered that a wealthy senior citizen from Wichita, Kansas named Nancy Martin had skimmed money from two local businesses while working as a bookkeeper and parading around as a philanthropist. By the time the law caught up with Martin, her actions had left two physician-owned companies in financial ruin. She was indicted in 2021, at which point investigators believed she had been committing financial crimes for at least two decades. In reality, the true extent of Martin's crimes may never be known, and what is known is considered to be the tip of the iceberg. Her thefts cost the business owners millions of dollars in lost cash as well as lost interest and earnings and the ability to place competitive bids for lucrative contracts. The owners also lost valuable time with their families while they were dealing with the mess Martin created. One of the victims, Francie Eckengren, told the judge overseeing the case that she had no idea her trusted friend was stealing money. And when Martin told her that there wasn't enough money to cover basic expenses, Eckengren worked longer hours, even as she received cancer treatment. In the meantime, she was unaware that her business actually was raking in enough money, but that Martin was using it to fund a lavish lifestyle at the expense of everyone else involved. Martin ultimately pleaded guilty to bank fraud and aiding or assisting in the filing of a false tax document. Her lawyer implored the judge to sentence her to probation, citing the 78-year-old's medical issues, but she received a four-year prison term, followed by two years of post-release supervision. In the judge's opinion, Martin's attorneys exaggerated the graveness of her health conditions, but he also gave her less time than the prosecution argued for. Thanks for watching. If your typically sweet elderly neighbor viciously attacked you and left you with serious injuries, would you cooperate with police or avoid implicating her in the crime? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye.